Um, next we have like we have uh, Santemi Leon and uh, we have Rioja Bodo, right. and Rioja. I think the Chateau Pipo mm -hmm. is much younger and not I, I think I, I pre, pre, pretty sure I think I've tried the Chateau Pipo. Mm -hmm. I definitely tried that one. So I think with the, with the young one and then more um, mature. That, that's usually yeah. it is um, youth before. So Chateau Pipo, it's from Saint Emilion, which is in Bordeaux. It's um, the right bank, which means it's uh, Merlot dominated. It's 2015 vintage. And it's a Grand Cru. There's a classification yeah, system. Sure, 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 sure. So it is um, worth mentioning definitely. Yeah, it is. It is a Grand Cru. It is very well regarded chateau in. Um, yeah, there are lots of chateaus we call you chateau, and not all wineries actually even have a chateau. Um, but anyway, this is a very well regarded chateau, and 15 was a very good vintage I've heard uh, about in, it. in Bordeaux. So I have high expectations. This should be a delicious wine. Wow. You know, it's, it's youthful, the wine, you know, there's a little bit of. You know, it's not as saturated as uh -huh. Saparavi ever is, which yeah. is correct. This is just True. wine Especially showing. when it's from Santa Milion. Right. But very classic nose with, yeah. um, you, ha you have sort of these coffee, vanilla, you know, there's definite oak character, but yeah, then, you know, sure. Merlot is Surely. plums. We always talk about black, but it's yeah, a plummy yeah, yeah. character that's, to that's, I, I think I mentioned when I came back from France, Talking about the French wines that I really fall in love somehow because I adore this this plum and this fig mm -hmm. which is which appears more after some aging right. in the oak. So this kind of plum figy notes, this is something that I really appreciate in the red wines and that's why I really fall in love with the French wines. And, and Mer oh, there are a lot of reasons to fall in love with French yeah, wines. Yeah, well, not, not only those, <laughs> not only those, but still right. I'm trying to stay Georgian a tiny bit, so. <laughs> yeah, that, that's perfectly fair, but I, and yeah. I think, but I think, you know, that Georgia can, the world has changed in the past century yeah. because there's so much more, you know, we say cross-pollinization, but, um, but exchange yeah. and people are able to, winemakers in the northern hemisphere can go and make a, you know, make, have to another vintage in the southern hemisphere and back and forth and there's so much exchange that people hold on, can hold on to their traditions but uh -huh. be informed and experiment from things that they learn in other places. Um, and I think, you know, certainly Georgia has a long, well, I won't say a long French influence. It goes back a couple of hundred years. Yeah. That's not so long in the Georgian context. <laughs> All the same. When speaking about Georgia, it's hard to say it was very long. That's right. Yeah. You know, a couple of hundred years. For my country, that's long. <laughs> okay, but at least yeah. you have 200 years of some French, uh -huh. some French influence here. And the French influence was always for quality wine. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know what? You, what do you see in this wine? Is there's elegance and there's finesse. Um, the Merlot is very so, as soft. You know, I happen to really love Cabernet. They're more structured, but this more is masculine, open. More masculine, right? No, I don't say more masculine. They're no. more intellectual. Okay. Okay. These are a little more seductive. They're uh -huh. soft. The pl they're plumier. The acidity is lower. Yeah. Um, the tannins are softer, whereas Cabernet. Is more vertical, like uh -huh. the, um, yeah, more vertical. There's a little more acidity. The wines draw, you know, the wines have more drive. There, there's a little more verticality and and laser character uh -huh. to them. Um, yeah, I, I there's a there's a fine line that Cabernet tends to drive, and whereas Merlot is softer and 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 I hate when people say it's more feminine, but it's generous <laughs> in a way that sure. Cabernet is more intellectual. I see, I see. So the, this is kind of a, a description of the wine that really needs to be observed. It's, it's like not, not that easy to, you know, oh yeah, yeah, so yeah, it's, it's not that easy to follow up. So the, these kind of notes are kind of a directions for me and I guess for um, the people who are going to see this video that these kind of things really show you how you th should think about the wine and listening to more experienced people 
who know the wines and describe them to see if they well if they are true they are right for yourself for right, yourself that, because every every person has their own perception of the wine and but this is kind of a way it's the kind of way that is shown that you can follow and find a lot of interesting things okay. for yourself okay so when you were talking yeah. about um, a couple of things and about wine quality and about listening to wine opinion makers or yeah, yeah. Like opinion shapers <laughs> So I'll just say when I remember when I first was interested in wine, uh -huh. that was when Robert Parker, who became a very big critic, was starting. And I used to get copies, I got free copies of his wine magazine. And I would look at what he I would look at what he wrote uh -huh. about wines that I was tasting. And not long ago I found my old copies. And even when I was just starting in wine, I would read what he wrote. And then I saw that I, in the, in the margins, had written my own note. And I would say, I don't know what he's tasting. I totally disagree with him. <laughs> and it was very clear for me, or then I realized yeah. much later, that I never agreed with him. Uh -huh. We had different, we had very different ex um, desires and um, subjective experiences of uh -huh. wine. And what he likes, I don't necessarily like. I got to the point where I could appreciate what he was looking at, and, and I, but I didn't necessarily, if he said it was a great wine, I understood why he thought it was a great wine, but I usually did not. It was not a wine I wanted to drink, okay? Yeah. That's number one. The other question is that it is important to listen to people who know about wine, uh, to hear how they evaluate wine in terms of quality. And so when you're talking about this Saint Emilion, though I was saying that Merlot is softer and more generous, when you, take, when you taste this wine, you feel the level of concentration in the mouth. Yes, the fruit is ripe and soft, but then there's, there's a center of gravity in the center of the palate that you know, even though you can drink this wine now, yeah. it has time ahead of it, yeah, it has finesse, absolutely. it has length. Still, it's that, quite young. It's and still young. Um, for, for, for considering the Bordeaux wine, especially for the right bank, which is softer, we say, right? right? It's still quite young, really nice drinking, but now I would, I don't but know. it has, it has I would time. Wait. I would it, wait for this one. I could drink this now. Yeah, it, absolutely. With food. With food, yeah. But, yeah, yeah, it, exactly. it, but it will improve over time. It will become more harmonious. Um, it will soften. It will actually become more complex. And it definitely has 10 years ahead of it. Um, one thing. I think it's quite general rule, kind of, that when the wine is good, it has a really nice potential. Like, generally, the wine is good, but it's young. Mm -hmm. It's easier to approach with the food. When as the wine gets more aged and more older, it needs less things with it. Would you agree with it, that? It depends. I think it depends. Uh -huh. um, sometimes an old wine um, has so much to say. What? Um, but it, well, if it has tannin, it has yeah. acidity. Sometimes it needs food. But the main thing is that. It's like you're getting back to like wine being people. You don't want a really busy meal yeah. when the wine is very complex. You want something that's going to be very quiet, very yeah. simple, yeah. and let all of the complexity, let the, let the wine shine. You don't want to overshadow the wine. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, boy, I just um, tried away when I finished my sentence about regarding the aged wines, I remembered Barolo uh -huh. <laughs> that I had. And it, yeah, well, yeah, it was aged, it was old, but no, Barolo without Meat, the food, most Italian no way. Wine. So I, I just, I understood straight away that I needed to correct myself because Nebbiolo yeah. depends on the wine. Nebbiolo the wine. always, yeah. the grape variety in in Barolo and Barbaresco <laughs> always needs food. You know what I'm doing? I'm trying to make for myself and for the people who are watching and who want to find some rules. Um, really tea, nice tips that will make their life with the wine easier but that's not that easy with the wine because it's so much individual so much different that you really cannot put it into kind of frames so that what I tried and understood that it's kind of wrong well people always ask me yeah <laughs> you know, people ask what's your favorite wine sometimes it's the wine that's in front of me you know um, I mean, I have, I, and I, I don't have a favorite wine, mm -hmm. I, I have to say, um, and or it's, it depends on what I'm eating and what do I think is going to work with, with, when I'm eating, because wine should accompany food. It's actually only the Anglo-American tradition where people yeah. drink to drink, 
but in the cultured countries of Western Europe, wine is served at the table with food. And whether that's Germany, France, you know, wherever, it, yeah. It, wine, wine is a part of the table. Yeah. The final kind of conclusion for the wine is the feast and the food with what you're right. drinking it. So the final destination, why this why the wines are always finished, like we speak about the wine and we definitely mention the food pairing. Why? Because it's not it's trendy, not just because it's the final destination for any wine. Though I don't get hung up on food pairings. Now I'm not going to drink Amarone or Safaravi uh -huh. with a very light fish dish. Yeah. Well. You have to figure out what what sure, works sure. roughly. But and in the end I kind of figure out what I'm eating and I think about what might work more or less. When there's a brilliant pairing, often that is luck. Uh -huh. Because you know, only the professional chef knows how to do the same thing every single time. And even then sometimes certain elements might change. And the other part of it too is that if we start getting complicated about wine pairings and food, people often are intimidated or scared enough and I don't want to make wine more complicated. I don't want people to get more put off. I, I want people to love that. wine. I want yeah. people to you know, say, yes, this is accessible. And you know what? You know, what do I feel like eating? What do I feel like drinking? And I'm going to make it work within limitations. Yeah, true. true. Actually, after taking like last month, I took we WESET or something. Yeah, last month, the, I took the, the WESET. WESET. Yeah, right. WESET. So after, after that, like understanding better the food pairing, I started taking more attention to that and it really made it more fun trying some wine. You're not just trying the wine but also adding the food pairing which makes or does not uh, fill the wine better. So that's really... And it should be fun. This, if it's not fun, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, gotta be yeah, fun. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, that's what I mean. It's, it's really fun but you need to get to that point. You need certain knowledge, you need certain experience, right? To get an understanding yeah. the wine first and then trying to come up here. Or, which is not, not, I'm not saying I'm an expert at that. I'm not saying it's easy, nobody, it's quite hard. Is. Yeah, you well, you yeah. You, nobody is. You experiment, yeah, exactly. figure it out and make it a game. Does yeah. this work, does it not? Is it, are you enjoying it? Yeah. That's all. First you are getting the ideas like, like I don't know, the sweet goes really well with the sweet, which was I was always against mm -hmm. because I don't like this overwhelming sweetness or stuff. But when you check these points like uh, acidity with acidity, sweetness with acidity or stuff like that, then you are understanding. You should know the terms, the like general terms, which what goes with what, and then you start checking that. Experiment, that's right. Yeah. And in some cases, but usually I think people are forgetting about the structure. Not just acidity, the alcohol, the sweetness or something, mm -hmm. but the structure of the food and the wine should kind of, uh, if not match, just be very relevant to each other. Well, the structure of the wine is it's, it's partly it's, it is, it's skeleton. Yeah. It's a, and, it's, and with the acidity, that's its central nervous system. It's a kind of sensation of the And wine that wine. has a flabby, uh, fat, you know, <laughs> structure has no vitality. Yeah. And and I think part of the issue, part of the problem sometimes, is that people think, oh my God, wine is so complicated. What fruits, what spices? You have to identify all these things. No, you don't. <laughs> you really, and it's much easier. Everybody feels, you know, yeah. is it smooth? Is it rough? Is it astringent? You know, is it you know uh, unpleasant? Um, is it zippy? Is it light? I mean, these are things in terms of weight and texture that we deal with that it's much easier often for people to get their yeah. head around and their language around. Then you can just say it's fruity, it's spicy, it feels, you know, coffee and cooked or jammy. General categories. It's important not to get tied up uh -huh. in all of that language and just feel, does this wine feel put, put together? Yeah. Does it feel like a muscle? Does it feel like a weight builder? Is the weightlifter or is it a tennis player? You know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. This is one thing that, yeah, this is very important, and this is what reminds me of the um, W set because there you have the frames, you have the certain words to explain. This is very useful, 
but I'm not a W set guy because I will take it, I will take a few more steps in W set, but when speaking with you, with speaking with Lisa, I will always speak with the words of emotion, with the words of wine, which I think it's the writers. But V set does a really great job. It's important, it needs some certain way of describing the wine, but when you feel more comfortable with the wine, then you can, I think, That's right. afterwards you can start speaking with your own words. The, the purpose of the W set or even the, the program from the Court of Master Sommeliers yeah. and ultimately what ends up being the Masters of Wine is that they give a lexicon, like a way of approaching wine because yeah. if trying to make it a little more objective because if all of if all we ever do is talk about wine in subjective terms we're we're talking like this we're not talking you know there's no way to understand because i never know what you're tasting i'm not in your mouth right we have to find a common language yeah. to True. to communicate Absolutely. and these classes try to give us a common language to express our subjective experiences but to the, to the people like my friends asking me what I feel in the wine. Those who are not experienced with the wine are not common, like commonly tracing the wine. I always say, ask yourself some questions. What does it remind you? Um, what, like, put a lot of question marks. What do you feel? Is it um, like aggressive? Do you like it? What do you like about the wine? Um, and ju ju just ask the questions, and it will make much easier even though you don't know you have not passed any I don't know any tests uh, you don't have any knowledge about the wine you still have this perception which you put you with the food right everybody likes food everybody tries food everybody says it's good it's bad it's salty it's spicy whatever it is so the same terms pretty much goes with the wine as well you can ask you, yourself what do you like and what why? What does this remind you of? I mean, you know, yeah. smell is an incredibly powerful emotional trigger. It's memory. And 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 I remember once I was out to dinner with a friend in France, and we sat down, and I ordered a wine, and my friend knows the wine and said, "This reminds me of when my grandmother used to iron all of our clothing." Right. <laughs> because there was a minerality in the wine. And I mean, this was a long time ago, right? And you had an old iron the and vapor the steam, and stuff. Yeah, the, steam. from yeah. the water and the <laughs> steam. And it smelled to her, it was my grandmother doing the ironing. Yep. Right. That's all. That's how you describe actually the wine with the, like when you want to describe it with right. your friends and right. the community. So we have um, one more, right? Yeah, one more. Um, this is Rioja Reserve 2015. Mm -hmm. So a reserve means you know, they have different, again, illegal classifications of wine in Rioja. And this wine um, was fermented and uh, aged. And as I recall the laws now, it, it had to be at least two years aging at the winery. Yep. And it's, this is a wine that should, assuming the quality is there, and it looks like it is, um, so and it has spent some time in, in oak. Okay, so somebody, sorry for yeah, interrupting, yeah, yeah. somebody would ask a question if somebody was listening um, quite well. Why do you think this wine is, has already the quality? You just took a look to the glass and you said it looks like it has the quality there. There's, I can see from the depth of color there's concentration, uh -huh. which is not a guarantee, but it's uh -huh. an indication. Okay? Yeah. Um, but I also know that it's a reserva, and just from my experience, Tasting Reserva Rioja, or that we would say Rioja Reservas, um, that these wines are meant to, um, they're accessible, you can drink them when they're released, but they're meant to drink within 10 years. Can uh -huh. they last longer? Yes. Um, there, but there's another category, the Gran Reserva, yeah. which has an extra period of aging, and that's where they really pick the, the Gran Reservas, they don't make every vintage. It's an exceptional vintage, True. so it's really the grapes and the, that are concentrated, mm -hmm. and they think will last for much longer. So this is most year, most years, most wineries, most bodegas will have a reserva, and it's a wine that's intended to age for a certain period of time. So yeah, the, this is the reason why I asked you this is because I also <laughs> am quite uh, often asked, like, 
how do you recognize a good wine? So generally you have your perception, your experience and knowledge. So you are taking the notes. So we saw it's a reserva. You see the vintage. Show. So it had, because of reserva, you know it had uh, some oak aging. The vintage shows that it's, it was po it's possible. There is logic. Uh, also the color. So there are, there are a lot of tips that we are not the, I don't know, superhumans or, okay, you are not a superhuman. No. You have a knowledge, you have experience and uh, you observe. Mm -hmm. So because you're seeing something, you're connected with your knowledge, with your experience and then you will conclude. But for those who are not experienced, don't have this knowledge, I always say, do you like the wine? Do you like drinking it? If you like it, it's... Well, more or less, it's good for you. It may be not good wine for like for us. For general, like generally, we say it's bad wine. But if you like it, then it's a good wine. And it's really useful personally for someone with um, with every wine. You have have a little book, and you write down the wine, and you write down yes, no, <laughs> what, what you or maybe if you could think about like what you liked and what you didn't. And then over time you'll see a progression and then if you go to a wine shop or you go to you taste wine with other people and you talk about it you you figure it out and you, you that's how you develop your own palate but it is by thinking about it and and it is a simple do you like it do you not like it can you can you say why you liked it or why you didn't like it yeah so it, it's after like after you get some experience and the knowledge so first i was taking the notes that like just writing down the names, this was indicator, like when I was starting like trying wines, when I was writing down the name, it meant like. Right. So I liked the wine, I wrote that down the it. wine name and the vintage. I got some uh, knowledge from uh, like university, I knew some things, I was, so like from this description, right. I went from the to this, and I'm like here, so the knowledge and experience brings you more things to describe, more things to pay attention, and you are more and more precise. And, and this and, and is really nice to feel. And that. you know, taste wines with other people and listen to what they have to say and agree or disagree. Yeah, you, you can you can talk about it or just think you know, silently. Um, but you know, there's no substitute for trying new wines and thinking about why you like them or don't like them. Yeah, what about the wine? Right, so this wine, very classic Rioja, because the first thing you get in the, is the oak in the nose. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah, that's true. Um, and, but that's the style. And, yeah. And it, you, know, you expect it, but it's balanced. It's not as though it's all oak and no fruit. You have very ripe cherry fruits. Um, but they, they are like, I don't know. I'd red say, apple. Like hand to hand, like they are all at the same, they, none of them like, not fruits, not the oak is standing in the front, but they are like beside. So you no, feel they, they, both at the same they, level. They, 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 com they complement each other. Yeah, absolutely. And certainly you notice it in the nose, but on the palate they're really integrated. You know, it's, there's a good amount of alcohol in this wine. I really feel mm. it on the finish, Lot, but there's lots of fruit, lots of oak, um, but they work together. Again, it needs food, you know. But compared to compared to the Bordeaux, for example, Spain is warmer, yeah. so the acidity is softer. It's a rounder wine. This one would go much easier with a, I would say, lighter food, like even the cheese. The Bordeaux is, for, for me personally, it's it needs much more complex food, much more with the, some, you know, this like French style with the with the peasy measy. You know what I mean? I don't know. But <laughs> the Rioja is a tough, more, uh, I don't know, it's like a character. I, I speak now more about the personality of the wine mm -hmm. okay. rather than the professional way of the wine, description of the wine. So Rioja is more, more uh, I don't know, more honest, more of a, like Glechi, you know? Okay, Glechi, Glechi. okay. So it's right. like the it's a warmer, real, it's real, a warmer, real guy, it's a warmer easier thing, it just 
a piece of cheese and a Rioja and they are going well, the, together the, very see, well. And, and for me, the French wine is very, it's very French. And so it is put together and maybe more reserved and it's a cooler uh -huh. climate. Whereas the Spanish is more open, lower acidity, yeah. broader, uh, deep flavors, but it's you know one of those sort of it's very much Mediterranean, and while I I often I do think of the Bordeaux as working with a steak. Yeah. This works with lamb, lamb, lamb chops, yeah. grilled lamb. Of course, that's the classic pairing yeah. in yeah, Spain, yeah. but it really does work with. They it works lamb. very and it, yeah, it's okay. hard to get anything else. They're crazy about it. But it does very much well work with lamb chops. It's perfect. Yeah, true. So especially the, especially the grill, the char, and the lamb chop, and the smokiness and the, the that yeah, you get yeah, in the wine. Exactly. Is a perfect, I, I, that's a that's I a already marriage. I already feel that taste, yeah. even though I have never had both together, like Rioja and the like. I don't know. You're getting. The I, 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 I imagined the ribes. You know this. Lamb bribes really nicely fried. Little, little chops. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're delicious. It, yeah. So the smokiness from the oak and the from the meat are just perfect in my mind. So I I really need to check that. Double check it. But this wine really. Reality. This wine has really good concentration. Yeah. Um, beautiful structure. Remember, I, I think I said earlier that this acidity was lower, but when you go back to it, the tannins integrate and there's acidity from the from the wood as well. And the, so the wine has has um, really has a lot of freshness to it, mm. in fresh and the, fruit and fresh acidity. The alcohol is integrated very well, but still it's like it's a, like a really um, it sounds at your ear like just asking for a little bit of food, you know? Oh, it's absolutely. Like the alcohol warms up you and it's like preparing you for a really nice, meaty, juicy. Some really nice dinner, so this this one would go. I hope that's where we're going. Absolutely. <laughs> so we we kind of revealed now our plans, but it's okay. I hope um, nobody has anything uh, against. No, no, no. no. <laughs> right. So yeah, the mo I'm I'm really happy with the with the wines because some of them I've tried, some of them I tried quite long ago, like Rihui, still it. It's been a time since I tried. I have never tried the Riesling. It was fantastic. The Valpolicella, I tried it like two years ago or something. Kept this bottle since then, and it appeared quite quite nice. But there, but, so. I, but I think and and this is not something that I'm saying to say it, but because I believe it and I think it's shown by you know, people are watching it and they're not going to have tasted these wines. But I'm going to say flat out that um, we had. What five, six wines? Six wines. Six wines, two Georgian wines, and there's no question that the Georgian wines are of a quality level that fits. You know, it, it's not as though we had these European wines and then there was a Georgian wine, another European wine, and a Georgian wine. The quality level. I mean, Georgia has the capability, and and even now is at a place where there are wines that belong on the table with some of the greatest wines of the world. Yeah. And I, it wasn't like I was like, oh my God, it's a Georgian wine. <laughs> it, it, it was an even progression and you know, each wine had its personality. Yeah. And I might say that one wine was not as good as all of the rest. Uh -huh. I'm not going to tell you which one it was, okay. but I am going to tell you it was not Georgian. Okay, I see. I see. That's, <laughs> that's uh, really, really heartwarming to hear, first of all. Thank you for that. I think Levan Shugashvili, who made the Hihvi, would be so happy to hear that. And the wizard, I'm pretty sure he will be happy hearing that as well. So, thank you so much. Thank you, and thank you. This was fun. I'm, it was really fun for me. It was really interesting. Um, and I really felt this, I don't know, we had this kind of conversations a lot. And these kind of wines gave us and this place and the wines gave us more reason to speak again about the wines and this is like a, I don't know, conversation that we could make anytime, anywhere, anywhere. but still thanks to the wine producers, thanks to 8000 Vintages and thank you of course because I so much appreciate our friendship and I really appreciate your knowledge and the emotion because there are a lot 
bunch of people who are very knowledgeable, but there is no emotion, which I cannot, totally cannot stand. And I really feel this kind of connection between our emotions, and I'm really happy having you here. So, thank you. A, thank you. Perfect. Great. Perfect. So, thank you so much. Thank you very much.